Good evening. Can I have everyone's attention, please? Can I have everyone's attention, please? I want to welcome everyone. Everyone's having such a great time. <laughs> so I want to thank you. We actually had such a wonderful day today. We um, launched for the second time our program called Meet the History Makers, a Day of Education, where we had 300 teachers and school uh, students um, all together to hear various panels and people like Army Bailey and uh, the Honorable Army Bailey and Paul Goodnight and I'm sure other people in this room participated, so I really want to thank you. I want to um, tell you about a project that's sort of near and dear to me and the reason that we're all gathered here, um, and that is the history makers. And our goal is to become the nation's largest African-American oral history archive. We're actually there at 700 interviews, but our goal is to do 5,000 interviews. <laughs> we, uh, with that, have 1,600 hours of people already on tape, and we just uh, received an announcement that uh, Carnegie Mellon will be working with us over the next year to process 400 of our interviews and creating a test site that will be searchable by image and text. So that what that means is that if we want to know anything about like blues in Chicago or blues in Memphis, we'll be able to go exactly to that part of the tape. And, our, and we want to really change the public dialogue here to show, you know, that really African Americans are really America's racial Alger story. And we can only do that with your help. I want to thank especially um, um, Lynn Whitfield, who is here, who I had the, the pleasure to meet um, at, at a wonderful dinner meeting that we had at Shea Josephine in New York. And she immediately sort of glommed onto the project and said that she was willing to do anything to really assist our efforts. So I want to thank her for being here and being our, agreeing to be on our co chair. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, it's a dangerous thing when you're listing uh, people, but um, John Rogers um, who, and Sharon Fairley Rogers, who've been longtime supporters of ours, who John had gotten us a grant that allowed, allowed us last year to really document interviews in tw 28 cities around the United States. And there's Deborah Thomas and Sharon Morrow and Barbara Bowles and, um, uh, Cheryl Bryson. So I want to thank everyone um, here. The other thing is um, um, the House of Blues Hotel has really made everything possible here. Um, uh, they have uh, provided the accommodations, the lovely dinner reception that we had this evening, and have put up our guests. So we appreciate support like that um, because we're able to treat you well. Um, what we, um, we went to Memphis this year, um, uh, and we have been wanting to go to Memphis. Actually, this project, as I was telling uh, Judge Bailey, originated in Memphis. Um, I'll tell you the story. I was, um, I, I went to, the, I'm a lawyer by training, so I was going to the National Bar Association Convention the year that Clarence Thomas was, um, had just been, um, appointed. <laughs> and it was a hotly um, contested um, convention because um, uh, people were really upset that he had been invited to speak and I had gone to uh, see my, um, the person I admired, Judge Leon Higginbotham. And it was in that room uh, when I was hearing people like um, Constance Baker Motley and uh, Reverend Beverly Kyles 
that I start thinking about the fact that I would talk to friends and I would hear their stories. And they weren't like anything that I would you know, see portrayed. In fact, I look at TV shows now and I'm like, what world do they exist in? They're not the world that I see walking around on the streets every day. And so I thought about this, that you know, while we know, you know Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks, that you know, even Martin Luther King has been reduced to the I have a dream speech, which is really sort of sad. And so um, the name actually came to me in Memphis, and I had the wonderful occasion to visit the museum there, which is a wonderful um, treasure, actually, um, um, Judge Bailey. So it was out of that, I came back to Chicago, I was like, I want to do a black archive. <laughs> and people were like, what is that? So, um, you know, because of people who supported this at this time, um, during the past four years, we really have grown a tremendous amount. Those of you who are in town uh, tomorrow from 10 to 11, we'd love to invite you to our offices to, for a tour because people have a hard time envisioning, but we're actually part of the state library system. But anyway, back to Memphis. I sent my crew to Memphis. Um, we've been, because of the good graces of the Hilton Hotels and um, and American Airlines, we've been um, able to uh, go around uh, the country and stay at places, you know, for long periods of time, according to my staff. So anyway, I told them uh, with this, we had already had uh, the king himself agreed to an interview, which we were very honored. And, you know, this was important to us because we really had not, for our archives, been able to get access to the blues community, and so this is opening us up to the blues community. Anyway, Larry, I'd like you to come here. Larry is our interviewer. Um, he um, has probably done 300 interviews uh, since he's been with us, and um, I'll let him take it from there. All right. Juliana Richardson asked me to deliver Isaac Hayes uh, to this program, and uh, you, you, you really can't deliver Moses. He has to deliver you. And so, um, but it was my pleasure to interview him in Memphis and to hear his story. He told a story about how uh, things were rough for him coming up, but the community pulled together and made him basically what he is. And that's a, that's a story I hear a lot of. Uh, Isaac Hayes is an artist whose work has uh, spanned generations. Uh, older people like his music and younger people like his music. He had this tremendous hit with uh, Shaft. He's an actor, a consummate musician, composer, arranger, who is, uh, who is a person who on the way over here today from the airport, all he could talk about was how to improve the uh, life in the black community. That's all they could talk about on the way over here today. So to a consummate artist, a great uh, musician, and a true history maker, uh, we're presenting this History Maker Award to Isaac Hayes. by an artist here um, named Preston Jackson. And um, we don't have a name for her. We, you know, she's like two years old. We don't have a name for her yet. But anyway, um, she, you know, has this sort of African body and um, she's on sort of a slave ship and she's telling stories. So it's in the old Griot tradition um, that we give that, that award. So, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, because, um, you know, Isaac is already a history maker. He was interviewed uh, by, our, our, by Larry uh, Crow back in the, the summer. And we actually, you know, we said, I said to Larry, you got to deliver, you know, Isaac Hayes um, so he can do this interview. And that's why we're here tonight um, where, you know, R&B is actually meeting the blues. 
So, um, Isaac, so you want to take it from there? <laughs> Well, I feel like I'm in Shanghai, but it's okay. <laughs> this is a fantastic event every year. And I'm so glad you conceived that idea in my hometown. Um, Judge Bailey, I can say with pride it's a Memphis thing, <laughs> tonight anyway. <laughs> because um, I'm so glad that, that you, you know, conceived the idea of capturing our history. You know, it's, it can stand, and our kids can see it and hear it. We have to preserve our culture and our history. And you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now, this is, has become a habit. We got an historical marker in high school, too. Oh, yeah, in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah. That's right, historical marker. You know, they, they wanted to put it on Bill Street. I said, no, put it in front of my alma mater, Manassas High School, because I want the kids to see that. Hopefully, it will inspire some kid to achieve like I did. So, and at that event, Judge Bailey was there. This next man that I'm giving this award to was there. You know, whenever you call him, he's always there. He's been my mentor, my idol, my friend. And uh, I've, I have the honor of, of interviewing him tomorrow night. I gave him an award uh, at the Blues Ball uh, two weeks ago in Memphis. <laughs> so it's become a habit, BB. <laughs> so I want to give this award to a living legend. They said James Brown, the hardest working man in show business. No, BB King is. BB <laughs> King, come forward, BB. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Isaac. Thanks very much. BB, I'll say for all the all the work you've done over the years and the lives that you've touched and the people that you've inspired and your generosity of giving yourself and your time and your words of wisdom and your encouragement and your talent. I don't know what a name is, but we think of a name. <laughs> I give you this award with much appreciation. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. I have a problem calling your name. Joanna. <laughs> now I know why we have some people who can talk, some can take care of business, and some do many other things. However, when these people was getting that talent, they must have forgot me. But I can say this to Miss Joanna and to my dear friend, Mr. Isaac Hayes, and all of you that are participating, I thank you so very, very much. Lucille won't be jealous, because I'll just tell her that the lady's just spending a while with me. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. See you tomorrow night. <laughs>